Let's get straight to the point. Can Western civilization survive? Absolutely. There's no question about that. The West is incredibly strong, and in a way it's important to think that, because when people start to think, oh, the West is finished, that's when they start looking for someone else to surrender to. And I think that's what you see in a lot of our institutions. A lot of people around who've been far too willing, slightly defeatist about the Western model, to say, oh, well, you know, China, that looks quite interesting. That looks like the future. Let's go for that. Yeah. What's exciting about the West is that it always has this capacity to pull itself back together again, because it's really very sort of competitive and open and emergent. It goes in new directions. It comes up with new ideas. But the problem it has is that makes it very divided as well. It's quite hard for it to bring itself together when it needs to defend itself and stand up for itself against a, a threat like China. And the thing that does that is this idea of thinking of all these different countries, all these countries across Europe and in America and in Australia as well, as one thing. And that's what the idea of the West does. So the West, the West can survive, but it needs to hold on to this idea of itself in order to defend itself against external threats. One of the, one of the key points you make is that the West is self-critical. I think that self-criticism has actually gone too far, <laughs> hasn't it? No question about that, yes. I mean, self-criticism is a powerful thing. But you have to, to understand what you actually have and what you're at risk of losing because these things can take a long time to build up. And it really, I think it's an institutional problem. In some ways, this sort of spirited idea of the West is always questing, always trying to come up with new things. It's still very strong. It's even strong in, you know, the new woke warriors of today. But they have no respect for the institutional structures that Western civilization has built up to make the most of itself. These structures of democracy, of rule of law, of freedom of speech, these are the things that they are tearing down. And without those, the West may survive, but it will be a much weaker and, and a worse West. You make two really valid points, well, you make a lot of valid points, but two of the points that, that uh, sort of um, stuck out for me were that the West consists of individuals who drive Western civilization. At the end of the at, at the end of the series, you say, well, you know, how can the West survive? And you say something along the lines. I'm paraphrasing from memory. Well, look around you. It's you. It's you. But earlier in the series, you also make the point, more implicitly, that there is a sort of absence of gratitude for what we've inherited, isn't mm -hmm. there? Mm -hmm. And I think gratitude is is a good way to think about the West. You know, because. Pride is easy and pride is always dangerous, you know, and in yes. the face of the extraordinary things that have happened in the West, which, you know, is this the great adventure in human history where, you know, it's rescued people from uh, uh, poverty, uh, sort of ended slavery, uh, sort of tremendous moral innovation, scientific, artistic innovation. So it's easy to look at that and feel pride, but that's dangerous. And then that becomes a bit static and it becomes a bit too defensive. Uh, but gratitude which, you know, is just like this extraordinary thing that we have that makes you want to hold on to it and treat it well and, and carry it forward and, and continue that, that adventure forward. That's it's a much healthier way to think about it, I think. It's, it's indirectly related to, I think, the subject of your first, of the first uh, episode in the series, which is religion. I think you kind of part company with Kenneth Clark, Kenneth Clark here because Clark, back in those days, could take a, a certain religious foundation for granted. Whereas now that has largely been abandoned. How central is Christianity in this cultural war? I mean, I'll just add another point, and that is that our opponents in this cultural war, they have a religion of their own. Environmentalism and identity politics, they would say it's not religious, but I'd say it, it, it pretty much ticks all the boxes of a religious devotion. We need a spiritual framework in which to fight this battle. How important is Christianity to that? Well, Christianity is very important. It's right at the, the foundation of the West. And I think it's very clear that humans are religious creatures. And when you take away one form of religion, something else comes in to fill that gap. And it may be much worse. What happened with Christianity in the West is, is enormously important because it, it really shaped the foundations of a lot of the institutions that we now take for granted. The respect for the individual, the respect for women, which is something that I wanted to particularly draw attention to, is really there in the foundations of, of, of what Christianity brings to the West. But although we think of this as something that's gone away, and it's true that culture, cultural Christianity is not as central as, as it was at, at, at the heights of the culture, at the same time, intellectuals are starting to bring it back. You saw Ayan Hirsi Ali recently saying that she was a Christian, which was very interesting, but also the historians. So Tom Holland's excellent book, 
Dominion, uh, more serious uh, books by, by other scholars like Larry Seedentop as well, that are really saying, if you look at the history, the truth is, there's not just an enlightenment thing, that these Western values really go quite deep into the Middle Ages. They go back into this period where Christianity was very formative. Jordan Peterson seems to be leading that charge back to it. it it's almost a, an unavoidable direction, isn't it? Mm -hmm. to, that, you know, an appreciation of, of Western civilization is inevitably going to lead you back to Christ. Uh, certainly those values are there. Look, I mean, I, I'm a Christian myself. I go, I go to church. I, I, I think Christ is, is, is someone that, that yeah. people should come to individually. Yeah. I, but it's important, of course, that the West is a place where Christianity is a choice. That, that choice at the heart of so much in the West is also something that comes from Christianity, which is about the idea that religion is, is a choice of, of belief. You have to turn to Christ in your own heart. 